we want to use proof by induction to show that this result is true. And proof by induction, remember, is a method you can use to demonstrate that mathematical results are true, and it's a two-step process. The first step, often called the basic step, is usually trivial. It's showing that the result is true for the first case. The first case in this example is where n is 1, so our basic step here would be showing that that result is true when n equals 1. The more challenging part, and it can be quite challenging, is the inductive step, where we're assuming the result is true for some general case, like the kth case, and showing that that implies the result is true for the next case, the k plus 1th case. So let's just crack on and have a go at this one. So we'll start obviously with the basic step. Uh, the basic step, you are just basically plugging in the value. So in the basic step, we're gonna let the n value be one because that is our first case. Okay, and we wanna deal with whatever that first case is. So we wanna work out the sum from r equals one to just one, which is unusual, but just one to one of three to the power of r minus one. So there is only one r value here, which is one. So that's gonna be three to the power of one minus one, which is three to the power of zero, but anything to the power of zero from exponent rules equals one. So that comes out to be one. We wanna check that that's what we'll get if we put a one in here for n as well. So that right hand side, if you like, that's gonna be one half. It's really just a numerical thing, mostly uh, when you're using the basic step, the first step in proof by induction. So three to the power of one this time, minus one. Three to the power of one is just three. Three minus one is two. So that becomes one half uh, multiplied by two. One half multiplied by two is one. So those have come out to be equal. That's what we expected. So that's fine. So we can sign off on the, the basic step, which is the more trivial part. The more challenging part of the inductive step it might be worth writing out what our assumption actually is and what it is we're actually trying to show. So we're trying, we're assuming that this is true for the general kth case. So in other words, if we change that to a k, so that's basically, we're allowed then to assume that the sum from r equals 1, not to n, but to k, of 3 to the power of r minus 1. The 3 to the r minus 1, that's just our kind of formula, it's like the placeholder, I guess equals one half bracket three to the power of k this time minus one. So all we're doing in that assumption is replacing the n basically with a k or some other letter, but we often use k. What we want to then do is that if that assumption is true, we want to show that that then implies that the sum from r equals one, not to k, but to k plus one of three to the r minus one, equals one half, but instead of three to the k, three to the k plus one minus one, okay? So that's what we're trying to, to show. This is not really part of the working, this is just kind of side working, but it is useful to write that down. This gives us a target, and it also reminds us that on the, on the way to that target, as part of the process, we'll need to use this assumption, otherwise we're not using proof by induction. You've got to use your assumption at some point. So I'm just going to make some space here. So that was the basic step over here, and we'll work on the inductive step. So this is where we're starting. We're starting here and trying to turn that into that. So it's going to be the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1 of 3 to the power of r minus 1. So proof by induction questions are not always to do with series, but they often are. If it is a series, and you're making this k plus one term, then a common trick, in fact, really the only way you can do it, is to split that, so the sum r equals one to k of three to the power of r minus one, so that's your first k terms, but remember there's k plus one terms here, so we need to include that final term, that k plus one term. That final term is just this thing here, but with a k plus one in the place of the three. So that's gonna be plus that final term, which is three to the power of k plus one, and you've still got the little minus one there, okay? So it should be that after some working, and it's not necessarily easy working, we somehow get from here all the way to that result that we're looking for. How you get there really depends on the question. They require different types of algebra. You've really just got to gain some experience. Let's have a look at this one. So the first term we're just gonna maybe leave for the time being, so that's the sum r equals one to k of three to the r minus one. This one we can tidy up. So the one 
positive one, take away one is obviously just zero. So that just becomes a three to the power of k. So it's plus three to the power of k. But notice at this point, because we've split our summation one to k plus one into these two parts, this first part here is now matching up with our assumption. This is where we can pull in our assumption. So we know what this is equal to. It's equal to one half three to the power of k minus one. So that is equal to one half bracket three to the power of k minus one. And then we've still got that three to the k just hanging out on the end there. So remember, it's worth always keeping an eye on where you're trying to get to. It's not always obvious how you're gonna get there, but keep an eye on it. So I'm gonna take this out of the bracket. It's not obvious you need to take it out of the bracket, but if you notice that this bracket is not the same as that bracket, so it's not worth keeping it in the bracket. If we do take it out of the bracket, it's gonna be one half times three to the k, and then one half times minus one, which is just minus one half, and the three to the k is just on the end. And again, I will emphasize a point that it's not obvious how to get to the answer in these. It will take a bit of practice and experience. In this particular case, we can or reorder the terms. So I want to pull these two terms with the three to the k together. So it's going to be one half times three to the k plus three to the k minus one half. So all that I've done there is reorder the terms. But I've done that because now we can pull out here a common factor of uh, three to the k. So that would be three to the k bracket one half plus one. So three to the k times one half gives you one half times three to the k. Three to the k times one gives you three to the k. So that is the correct factorization. And then we've got minus one half on the end. This here though is one half plus one, which is one and a half or three over two. So this becomes three to the power of k times three over two minus one half. And if you think about that three over two, that three on the top there is a three to the power of one. If you're multiplying a term to a fraction, you just multiply it to the top of the fraction. So this is like three to the power of k times three to the power of one all over two minus one over two. So you might start to see where this is going. And then this is gonna give us, because of exponent rules, three to the power of k plus one, because you multiply by adding the powers together, three to the power of k plus one. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that over two minus one over two, but you can see now these have got a common factor of that over two part, in other words, a common factor of one half. So I can pull that half in front, so we get one half, three to the power of k plus one minus one, and that is what we were trying to get to. So tricky algebra in the middle, and you will need to gain experience to know how to do that algebra, but just notice that we've now completed the overall proof. We did the basic step over here, that trivial step, proving that the first case was true, and then the inductive step, we've now just proven that if we can assume that the general kth case is true, that implies that the next case, the k plus one case, is also true, and that completes the proof by induction for that particular result.